Hey, what's going on, guys? My name is Nick, or The Notorious Fancy, and today I'm joined with Nikki Snacks of Big Dogs Gotta Eat. Uh, thank you very much to Nick for coming out here. It really does mean a lot to me. Uh, in this series, obviously, I interviewed a few people, and I'm going to try to continue to get more people on here. Um, the questions are not really based off of fantasy football. It's more about like the person's life uh, instead of some takes about who's going to be the running back one next year, who really gives a fuck in, <laughs> in January. So let's get right into it. All right, Nick, my first question here is, uh, when did you start to play fantasy football? Yeah, so I started playing fantasy football when I was 13. Um, my And I guess that's, what, 13, 14 years now? Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, uh, obviously on a little bit of a different platform now, but uh, when I was 13, my aunt, she were, she works, she's a lawyer, and she, in her law firm, she, she doesn't know what the hell she's doing. So she's like, you, you know football, right? I was like, of course I know football. I love football. Here I am like a – 13 year old kid she's like well you want to be on my uh, fantasy football team and at that time I really didn't know anything about it um you know because it was still kind of new and whatnot uh, well not new but you know the, with the yeah technology with the computers and stuff. And stuff. so I went out to Barnes and Noble she gave me like 100 bucks and I bought all those magazines and stuff and figured out everything and um it was pretty great I think our first pick was was Ladanian Tomlinson so uh <laughs> we had the first pick in a 14 team league and um, we didn't wind up winning, but that was my, my first taste of, of fantasy football. And I have grown to love it ever since. That's crazy. I started playing when I was eight years old, when uh, Victor Cruz was like the best in the league. I'm 20 now. So <laughs> now that's, that's, that's good. The Victor Cruz was a great player. As, as you know, I'm a bit of a giant fan. So, uh, oh yeah, obviously I, I want to <laughs> spot for Victor. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. So uh, obviously you're on the podcast with uh, Nick and Max. Now, how did you meet those guys? So we, we grew up in a very small town um, in New Jersey, uh, Emerson. And when I tell you, it's like the size of my room. That's, it's, we, have, we have one stoplight in the whole town. Um, so we went to school together. Nick is a year older than me. Uh, Max, is, Max is a few years old. He's about four years older than us. Um, but like me and Nick were always good friends growing up. I, I've known Max forever. Um, our friendship kind of took off when he joined our our uh, E Town Get Down Fantasy Football League, um, but you know through through school friends we we've always hung out. Um, me and Nick have had more than our fair share of uh, crazy memories together. But um, Max has joined Max has joined in on those ridiculous memories. So uh, it's been good. Known him twenty years now. So it's it's really great friendship. That's good. I know I know you've talked about on your podcast talking about how when you were younger you guys did some type of wrestling. You know. But uh, what, what made you get that idea that you should be like the like Vince McMahon at 12 years old or however old you guys yeah, were? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So we were, we were 16. Um, and we, for whatever reason we got, like I've always been into wrestling. Like when it was WWF and the Attitude Era back in the day, I, I was obsessed with it. And mm-hmm. to this day, like every year I travel to WrestleMania, wherever it is. Um, but when we were 16, we like, you know, we, we were off it for a little while in like the 13, 14 years old. And then we got, we all got back into it again. Uh-huh. And this is when like the violence was taken out, the blood was taken out. And we were like, let's, let's do something here. So on my front lawn, we just decided to make a Facebook group and we sold tickets that bought, bought our beer for, for, for the night. And we would go around and in town and find like, you know, pieces of wood that, that people were throwing out and we'd smash each other through it. And we'd have like 20, 30, 40 people around my front lawn in chairs watching us wrestle. It was like, it's like the most ridiculous thing in the world, but we had so much fun doing it. Um, and I tell you, it was, it was hard. Like after every show we put on, I was sore as shit. I remember <laughs> I got concussed in one of them. I was like, I was out of commission. I was out of school for like two days. Cause I got, got concussed, but honestly well worth it i wish it lasted longer than it did but it was fun and um i'll try and go back and find some some facebook videos for you because it's just an absolute shit show but it was it was so much fun it was it was our own creation and um just that creativity alone made us made us want to do it so we had a great time with it that's amazing (laughs) it was it was ridiculous Now, you've also talked about on your guys' podcast that uh, when you were younger, you had cancer. Now, how did that really affect you as like a, so growing up? Because obviously, that would take a big turn in your life. Yeah, it was, it was crazy. It was actually, I had cancer when we were doing the, the front yard wrestling. So, um, I was kind of a, I guess I still am a sick, sick fuck. But, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, it just, it kind of gave me, you know, just the, the hindsight on life, really. Um, mm-hmm. Don't take any day for granted. God literally puts us on this earth for 
however long. And having that was a true, you know, it's an eye opener. It really is. Uh, but I had an unreal support system. I have amazing friends. I've, I've got like, you know, people say you're lucky if you have one friend in life. Yeah. Um, I've got like eight really good ones. So we had our like semi formal and I was bald. All my friends shaved their heads. Like it was, it was really, um, can't it, I had cancer, but at the same time, didn't really feel like I had it. I was still going to school when I didn't mm-hmm. have my treatments and whatnot, family, friends, everybody was there to support me. But just, just knowing that life can be shook like that in a day really, really makes you think. And, and to this day, just never take a day for granted. So it was a, a tough experience, but a great life experience. That makes a lot of sense. I'm glad you're okay now, obviously. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Otherwise, we wouldn't have a great podcast that I was terrible. <laughs> no, everybody would be missing out. <laughs> exactly. Now, talking about your podcast, now, are those plugged in right now, your headphones? <laughs> <laughs> yes, they, they are plugged in now. And I know that's, uh, I know my earphones are a uh, topic of conversation in the comments, especially those uh, who are just watching for the first time. They're asking, what's this jackass doing with, with unplugged headphones? And, um, Listen, I I love to fill you guys in on the secret, but it's it's tough. No, it's it was it was a, it was a gag when we when we did our our like third episode. Mm-hmm. Um, we were trying to use it with headphones and and our our laptops so we could hear better, and they weren't working. I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just gonna keep them out. And I don't think I missed the show without them without them dangling on the ground. So it's uh it's my staple, and I don't plan on ever changing it. <laughs> That's great. I like that. <laughs> yeah. So something I gotta diversify it somehow. Exactly. Diversify the revenue, as Nick would say. That's it. Yeah. All right. So now, who do you feel has the worst takes on the show? Obviously, in my opinion, it's Max, because that asshole didn't answer my Twitter DM to come on here. So He's a, he's a real piece of shit, let me tell you. But exactly. uh, you stole the answer right out of my book. It's, it's Max. And I'll tell you right now, I've had some brutal takes myself, but I can't listen to the kid. I can't do it. It's, it's, it's impossible. He, he goes off and off and off. And, and I, I, I'm sure you guys see reaction. I'm just like, what? What? What are you talking about? But um, he, he's fun to he's fun to gag on. So I, I got to say Max because uh, obviously Nick, Nick's the Nick's our ringleader. So I, I can't I can't say him. But Max brings so much to the table. I just uh, there's certain things he says I, I kind of scratch my head at. <laughs> yeah, he's also good at drawing pictures, as we can see. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, real real artist, real artist. Yep, definitely. <laughs> Who came up <laughs> with the idea of like herd the go- of the goats? Is that like a barstool thing or? Yeah, it's it's it was kind of like a, a combined effort on that. We were trying to think of like because obviously it's a fantasy football podcast, but we like uh we like doing you know a few other things and um, trying to incorporate some other stuff. And um, part of my take does Mount Rushmore, and that's those are like my favorite episodes. Like, yeah. <laughs> like who are they picking? What stuff like that? So we were trying to not. not not in a sense to copy them, but I think it, it brings like a little bit of uh, added juice to the end of the episode where we can have viewers and, and listeners like kind of debate and vote on Twitter for them. So mm-hmm. it was a collaborative effort. Uh, and I personally, I want to do one each episode, but um, there's not, the, you know, the topics start, start dwindling down a bit and whatnot, but they're yeah, always a lot of fun. And when we're, when we're picking them through in our group chat, we pick through them and if somebody takes one, we're like, ah, oh, fuck, fuck, I should take it before, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. So it's like, it's almost like a competitive nature too. Um, you know, I've won almost all of the herd of goats, but that's neither here nor there. Yeah, nah. <laughs> just, it's just a little, an extra spice of things to uh, kind of deviate from the fantasy football uh, world and give, give our listeners something else to, to think about and get, get in our heads on, on what we like, so. Yeah, it definitely makes a lot of sense. It also adds to the comments. Like you see a lot more comments on those episodes of people saying oh, yeah. uh, who's better, who picked the best, stuff like yep. that. Yep. So like, like when we did uh, NFL uniforms, we had, you know, guys getting mad at us because we didn't add their team or something they liked. So it's it's good. It's fun. It's interactive. So I love doing the herd. Yeah, that's great. I love that too. Uh, it's funny how like people get pissed off when you, you hate on their team. And then in the comments, you see all these people typing about how the Giants fucking suck to piss you off. So Yeah, I know. I, they, 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 they know how to get to me. It's, it's all right. I, yeah. I've, I've learned. I learned. <laughs> now, obviously, you guys record the podcast all year round, like uh, some other podcasts. But do you enjoy the off season more or the regular season when you're like recording the podcast? I 100 percent enjoy the off season more. Um, during the season, it's tough, like because we'll get like start sits questions, and um, you really kind of got to be on your game with like the waiver wire and whatnot. Yeah, uh, I like the off season, the, the prep work, and when we do like draft stuff and and rookies and and mock drafts. I, I love that because for, for some reason, um, 
when it is the off season, the, the viewers and listeners kind of, it, it's kind of better in, in a sense where the, the comments are better. They're like asking different questions as opposed to when we put out an episode during the year, all the comments are, do I drop this guy for this guy? Do I sit this guy, this guy? Like, man, come on, just, just come on. Like th- that's why the off season, we don't get those kind of questions. And, and yeah. for me, it makes it 20 times more enjoyable. That Plus the, the, the pressure is off of like, like I'm not in my fantasy element yet. I'm not in my leagues yet. They're not going on. So if like I have a losing week and then I'm like, Oh fuck, we gotta go do this podcast. It's like, it's like sucks. But in the yeah. off season, the energy is always there um, more so than during the regular season. So I would definitely, I'm definitely going off season. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Like if you make like one wrong call, people are calling you an asshole in the comments thinking you're dumb. or Dude, something. I, I, I told this one kid and, and he, he DM me on Twitter. He's like, um, I forget what was the sit start, sit start was. It was like Josh Jacobs or, or Joe Mixon. And I, I told him Josh Jacobs and, and Mixon had like 10 more points. And he's like, I lost by nine. And for three straight days, he was just going off on me. I'm like, fuck, this is really what this, – this is, this, is, this is what I signed up for. But, jeez, man, it's like week seven. <laughs> <laughs> People but it, it, comes, it comes with the territory, so um, – that doesn't happen in the off season, which is great. <laughs> yeah, that is great. Like during the season, I know I'll answer to someone's comment. I'll tell them to start someone and then they won't start them. And then they, they won cause of it. And then they're like, Oh, you fucking idiot. I yeah. glad I didn't answer it. Then why'd you ask? Like, right, why'd you exactly. ask well, why'd gonna... you ask? You, you can't win. You, you just can't win with these people. Exactly. Now, obviously this year you guys started to do the bagels and locks show, which I really enjoy. Who came up with that idea? Uh, I, I give him, give him grief all the time, but that was, that was Max's idea. He, uh, we were talking about doing some, some different kind of show uh, on the weekend outside of Fade the Public because we want to, you know, get a little bit more involved. And, um, you know, we, we like to gamble. We love, uh-huh. we love that stuff. And uh, he's like, well, why don't we do a gambling show? I'm like, oh, that's, that's perfect. I mean, there's plenty of them out there, but we, you know, we have a base. People, people like the show, so let, mm-hmm. let's try it. And um, it kind of took off from there. Like the first episode, we were a little, you know, a little nervous, but now we found our niche and it's, it's awesome. We have a great new editor that came in, really helps us out, does great work. Mm-hmm. Um, it's actually, I, I love doing that show. Bagels and Locks is, is awesome. And I give Max all the credit in the world for that. So did Max come up with the name too, or was that? He did, yep. He came up with the name, uh, came up with our big lock thing. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> the, name was, the name was honestly genius because, yeah. you know, we, we bring it out Sunday morning and it's right there. It's just, it was perfect. So uh as much much shit as i give him i i give him i give him bagels and locks credit that makes sense do you guys eat those bagels after or you just throw them out <laughs> no no they they get thrown to the wayside they are uh they are plastic bagels oh. <laughs> Dis- disclaimer disclaimer it ruins the immersion <laughs> i know i know all right now obviously you're a huge giants fan as you can tell you know obviously he's wearing the hat as you guys know uh, do you have any stories from any Giants games you went to that you find to be like more, more interesting, super interesting to tell? I, where do I start? Um, well, for one, I've been kicked out of that stadium. I shit you not probably 10, 11 times. Um, mostly during divisional games, Cowboys, Eagles. That's when, uh, it's when the fights ensue and whatnot. Um, but there was, a, there was a time I was on the field for, I had, I had season passes for, for a year on the field. And um, I started cursing out Tom Brady. It was during a preseason game. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Giants were playing the Patriots. And uh, I, I don't dislike the Patriots. I don't dislike Tom Brady or whatnot. But I was, I was on the field, and I, I saw my opportunity. So I'm standing there screaming, fuck you, Brady, fuck you. And this is when he has long hair. He looked like such a dweeb. And he comes over, and he's like, he gives me a head nod. He's like, all right, all right. So that's how it's going to be. All right, all right. And I just kept saying, fuck you, fuck you. I kept going off on Needless to say, my sideline passes got revoked after that. So, um, oh, that's no fun. Come on. Yeah, guys. instead of instead of having them for ten games, two including the preseason, I lasted a combined two games. So, yeah. you know, uh, outside outside of all the <laughs> fights I've been into and the and the um, the uh, the ejections I've gotten, it's 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 a I'm a different animal, different animal there. Um, there was uh, actually <laughs> one of my favorite stories was uh. When we beat the Cowboys in, in 2011 to win the NFC East, um, uh-huh. I was at the game, and after the game, I came out and I got on top of top of my car and I was dancing. We were playing, we were blasting music and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, the next day, I had a physical, so I went to my doctor. And he looks at me, he's like, or it was like the guy that was like weighing me in and whatnot. Before I saw my doctor, he looks at me, he goes, 
goes, were you at the Giant game last night? I was like, oh, yeah. He goes, were you on top of your car dancing after the game? I was like, fuck me, that's embarrassing. It's like, yeah, yep, yeah, that was that was me. So my my craziness ensued into into my doctor's office, which uh, which was embarrassing, but. I don't really give a fuck. We just won the division. <laughs> exactly. It was worth it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Now I, I think you're, are you a Yankees fan as well? I'm pretty sure. I am. Yes. Yes. Yeah, now, hard Yankee fan. Obviously the Yankee stadium, that also gets crazy there. I've been to one game. I saw a bunch of people fighting now. Have you ever gotten into a fight there? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's pretty much where I go. I got into a fight against Red Sox, Red Sox fan a few years ago. And then um, the wild card game, uh, when Didi Gregorius hit that tying home run in the first inning against the Twins, got uh-huh. into a big fight in like the eighth inning before, you know, the game was almost over at that point and before we were leaving. And um, me and this twin fan got very much into it. My brother had to hold me back. It was, it was pretty ugly. We had, we, we got out right after that, but uh, yeah, I, once, once I hit like a professional arena stadium, it's uh turned to a new guy. Yeah, I turn, in, I turn into a new a new psycho. My my girlfriend doesn't really love me for that, but uh, it's okay. <laughs> there's no change in me. Pa- passion's passion, man. That's that's it. It's, it's unfortunate, but exactly. What do you they don't understand why we're yelling at the TV at eleven yeah. at night. And- they think they think it's it's just a game. It's not just a game, man. Like I wear fucking Yankees on my heart. I got mm-hmm. I lost my Giants emblem, but I wear shit on my heart all the time. It's not it's not just a, it's more than a game. It's it's life. It's exactly. life or death. Exactly, especially when someone tries to come at your fandom. Oh, dude, that's – I won't even – no one – if anybody tries to come at my fandom, they, they're they going to get an onslaught. Trust makes me. sense, makes sense. Now, I'm in the BDG Dynasty Slack, and Scott obviously saw that I interviewed Noah, but he wanted me to get you on here, and he wanted to ask you a question that I guess he's never asked you now. Uh, are there any untold stories from the draft that you guys went to last year in Nashville? Oh, man. Whew. Well, that was uh that was quite the trip <laughs> um well uh nick did a very good job at 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 um vlogging the whole thing so and uh i can't lie it was it was a pretty pretty booze infested um few days so it's it's tough to to match the the pieces together but um you know me and me and max we we at i think it was like maybe three o'clock in the morning or something we went outside and we were we were talking and we and this, this one guy comes up to us and he's, he's offering us, he's offering us smoke crack. And we're like, that's, it's not, not really a great idea. And, uh, kept pushing, pushing, pushing. So we finally got the hell out of there, but that's, the, it was like, the, it was like the, like the, we, we were like hammered and we were just outside, like talking, like slurring our words. We were probably like, you know, probably like this. And this guy's like, Oh fuck, there they are. I'm going to, I'm going to go rob these people. So we, uh, thank God it didn't happen. But, um, that's probably like the, the craziest, thing that happened outside of like me at the time having my heart broken by the giants taking daniel jones which uh you know great pick obviously yeah, amazing you know, pick. It's a big, what, a, what a great pick um but no it, it was great there was just i don't know about any untold stories in nashville um outside of being offered crack <laughs> but uh um scott scott knows and i know you guys saw the vlog it was it was a very special special experience for us and um, one that I wish I remembered a little bit more of, but uh, I remember all the all the great parts, and, and that's that's what matters. So, yeah, to everyone watching, if you guys ha- haven't seen that video, if you don't know uh, of Nick, obviously you should go watch that video. It's amazing. Yeah, it's it, it's really something. We had so much fun. I was I was drunk enough to get up on stage and sing karaoke, and I was getting in the face of, of Eagles fans and Cowboys fans, and kind of just in my natural element. <laughs> When you were in Louisiana this past weekend, did you get any crack there? We often crack. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it would have probably been a lot easier. <laughs> um, it was uh, it, that was that was an interesting time. Me and Nick were were very much in the uh, in the ghetto of New Orleans. Um, you know, just kind of minding our own business and whatnot until we got to Bourbon Street. But it was it was quite the different um atmosphere so to say it was it was a lot of fun i was only there for for like 20 hours so i was in and i was out so i tried to make the most of it and it was it was definitely it was a lot of fun Na- the national championship was great atmosphere um bourbon street is is a hell of a place it's uh you know that was my second time in new orleans i went for wrestlemania about like five years ago uh-huh. and um it's just it's like second to none it, it my body still hurts from it but it's always well worth it that's that's great. <laughs> it seems fun there. Yeah, it, it is. It is. It was it was definitely a good time. 
All right. Now, obviously, who I got to ask a question now. Who's your worst pick ever in fantasy? Because I know Max, obviously, he took Alvin Kamara in the first round, or the first pick overall. Now, what is your worst pick? We'll never let him live that down. So, uh, it was, it was, um, I can't, I don't, I don't want to say the wrong year. Maybe it was like 2011, 2012 or something. Um, but I fell in love with the hype train that was CJ Spiller. Uh, <laughs> and I took him number one overall. Needless to say, that did not work out um, at all. Uh, I was lucky enough. I, I nailed, like, I, I forget the exact draft itself because I know I, I did make the playoffs even having CJ Spiller. I didn't win. Um, I got trounced in the first round, but my, the rest of my draft was good, but CJ Spiller, holy shit. I convinced myself he was like, the hype was real. And I, I don't know if, if you remember that or not, but uh-huh. he was, he was the, the Bills running back from, from Clemson. And um, he just, CJ Spiller, CJ Spiller, CJ Spiller. And I'm like, all right, all right, that's my guy. And this was before I really like dove into all the, you know, the advanced stats that we use nowadays and, and, and whatnot. And um, really just an awful awful pick really was bad Uh, but we all have one of those so yeah definitely i drafted larry fitzgerald last year in the second round and by god he was terrible that's all right you know you got you had had good character on your team if anything (laughs) yeah no i had actually terrible character because my first pick was Le'Veon bell so (laughs) okay well that's yeah that's that's a tough that's a tough spot (laughs) yeah i should have had a tyreek or someone else there to to make it even worse (laughs) now obviously since you guys uh do the podcast you feel like your guys league has gotten more competitive or a lot harder has it always been just as competitive it's i would say um the competition in the league has, has probably stayed around the same um mm-hmm. you know i actually had a bad year i was five and one and my team took a took a tailspin for the worst uh, i was in the playoffs like five years in a row before that championship game three out of the last five um but everybody everybody seems to seems to be getting back on par with you know competition wise and stuff um i know they watch our podcast so they know what the fuck we're doing yeah. uh, that kind of puts us at a little bit of a disadvantage um, but you know, it's, it's good. It's, it's only 10 man, which, uh, which I, I started to join 12 man. I think it's more competitive and, and it makes yeah. it tougher, but everybody, everybody's got a good sense of what they're doing. And, um, you know, like the kid who came in last this year was, he was in the championship game last year. So it was, uh-huh. it was kind of like a fluke. He's been in the playoffs numerous times before. Um, I would say overall the competition is, it's, it's pretty stiff. There's no, I wouldn't say there's like any bottom feeders or like uh-huh. guys that you just don't worry about come draft night. You know what I mean? Yeah. That, that they're usually, they're usually plugged in. Yeah. I noticed that ever since I started making videos this summer, like people came to the draft with like fucking the players I wrote down as being like the best or guys I wanted to take late in the draft. Lamar yeah. Jackson's off the board way too early. All this shit. It pissed me yeah. off. I know it, it, it's tough. Like when you put it out there and, and you do good work, it, it's, it's, it's going to get seen by the guys in, in your league. And you know, that's, that's the nature of this business. But, uh, yeah, exactly. Like, I know these people don't know who the fuck Devin Singletary is, but you're drafting them. Like, you know right, who John course, Brown is, course, you're taking them. Well, well, Nick said I saw him in one of his videos, so I might as well take him. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And what's funny is, I don't know, did you ever tell people that you were, like, on the podcast, or did they ever, like, figure it out? Because I never told anyone that I made videos, and they just found it. Yeah, like, no, it's, it's funny. It's, we, you know, we started off so small, and, like, nobody really watched, and then all of a sudden – all of a sudden our league was like, wait, wait, what are you, what are you guys doing? We're like, well, this is, you could watch. And they found out on their own. We weren't going out of our way to tell, you know what I mean? It was kind of just an authentic organic type of thing. And um, here they are stealing all our shit. So (laughs) yeah, exactly. It's pretty fucked up now. uh, (laughs) Obviously uh, I don't, I'm not sure who your favorite player is. Who would your favorite player be of all time in the NFL? So I, uh, obviously I'm, I'm biased. Um, I, I don't want to say Eli. It's too obvious. He, he's more of like a he's more of like a hero to me as opposed to um, a favorite player. Uh, but my favorite player is he still re- resided on the Giants. I'm very stubborn like that. Brandon Jacobs was was my my guy. I loved him, and it's it's funny. I used to uh, oh, I got this thing for running backs except Saquon. I don't love Saquon. I mean, I love the player. I hate the pick. But yeah. either way, um, I used to obsess over Tiki Barber. Like when I was a kid. I was like six, seven years old. I used to love, love, love Tiki Barber. I had his, I had his home jersey, his away jersey. I had his Pro Bowl jersey. I had everything. Um, I, snuck in, I snuck into a place when I was like eight years old. Uh, I was in the Giants practice, and we didn't have like the VIP passes to get the autographs. Uh-huh. So I snuck in under like the ropes. I was like, like kind of like caution taped off. And I snuck in, got his autograph and everything like that. Um, I had it framed in my room for forever. 
Uh, and then he, then he quit. He didn't retire. He, he quit. And I despise him. Any chance I get, I will shit on him. Um, he is, he's scum to me. He really is. And every time he comes back to the stadium, um, I make sure to go just so I can boo profusely. I, I, I hate the man. I can't believe what he did. He was in his prime of his career. He was playing so well for like three years in a row. He was fucking like the best back in the league, you, or arguably. And he just unceremoniously quit. And it was, it was a heartbreaker to me. So I, um, Brandon Jacobs was the guy that came in after him. And um, I had a soft spot for him. I loved his intensity. I loved the fact that he loved being a New York Giant. Um, so Brandon Jacobs to me was just, that was my guy. So I, I will, I will always say I will, I will die with Brandon Jacobs. That is, that's my man. <laughs> that makes sense. Now, obviously you talked about how Daniel Jones, you were kind of shook when you picked him. Now, how do you feel about him now? Do, Cause like, I'm going to be honest, I I'm not a Giants fan. I'm a, I'm a Dolphins fan. I live in New mm-hmm. Jersey though, but how do you really feel about him? Like his fumbling problems and all that. Do you feel like that'll get better? Uh, well, I was definitely shook. That's for sure. <laughs> if you guys saw the video, you you would know I was in a state of shock. Um, but I I love him. I really do. I think uh, I think it's easy to root for him for a guy that was just absolutely blasted by everybody in the media and the Giants blasted for drafting him so early. I did not expect what he did. Granted, yes, the fumbling is a problem, um, but I would rather him fumble the ball because I think ball security could be better coached and better developed. I would rather him be fumbling the ball like he is as opposed to throwing atrocious interceptions. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, Um, Because I think bad decision-making like that over the middle and stuff like that could, you know, it could be detrimental for in his future, but I I'm all in on him. I I love his accuracy, his deep ball accuracy, his touch, everything. He's, he's smart as a whip. He's got great mobility. I, I think I really do think sky's the limit. I don't not not sitting here saying he's the next Patrick Mahomes or anything, mm-hmm. um, but I really look at him as as a franchise quarterback. And thank God because if he was this big of a bust, our team would have been set back for years. So yeah. um, ride or die with Danny Dimes. That's 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 my guy. Okay. Now, how do you feel about your guy's new coach, Joe Judge? Now, I don't know much about him. I've, mm-hmm. I've watched the, his, like, uh, what is that called? Like, his press conference where they yeah. introduce him. And he just seemed like a, a smart guy, a real smart guy. So, how do you feel about him? Yeah, so when I, I, I wanted Matt Rule. I thought Matt Rule would have been a really good um, – would have been a really good candidate just based on his – I know it was college, but just based on his history of, like, rebuilding mm-hmm. teams and, and bringing out the most in his players and whatnot, I thought that's exactly the type of – coach the Giants needed um and then I saw the, the contract he signed and and all the stuff he got from Carolina and I'm like damn all right but then I got nervous that they were going to hire and I'm sure we can talk about this in a minute that they were going to hire Jason Garrett to be their head coach and I may have taken my Giant fandom out if John Mara hired Jason Garrett to be the head coach but he didn't and they hired Joe Judge and like you I knew fucking dick about him. I knew <laughs> nothing about this guy. All I knew was that he was on the Patriots coaching staff. And then I started reading up on him. He was on Nick Saban's staff. And then I started reading more. And then Nick Saban raves about him. Bill Belichick raves about him. And then you watch that press conference mm-hmm. and you're like, damn, this guy is, he's intense. He's tough, disciplined, all this shit. And I was, I'm all in on him. I, he said, granted, it's just, just a press conference. So we mm-hmm. got to see how it goes onto the field. And you know, how he manages his timeouts and his challenges yeah. and all this other different shit. But he said all the right things. He said everything I wanted to hear. Um, my favorite part about that press conference was he's like, don't tell me what a player can't do. Tell me what he can do. And we'll figure it out from there. That's like the Patriot mold. They yeah. get, they get their best out of their players for what they can do. And that's, I hope he brings that philosophy. He said he would. So I take him by his word and, and I am a big believer in Joe judge. I think he's, he was an excellent hire an out of the box hire but an excellent hire. So we, we will see. I, I pray at least. I pray. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. The, the Dolphins got uh, Flores from uh, the Patriots, and he was obviously a pretty good hire for us. Our team fucking no talent and so ended up winning a couple games. And they, they won like five games or how, four or five games. Yeah. And, and like they were competitive in, in others. That's, that's a very – he's – Flores is a good – I like that hire a lot. He's going to be a good coach for that team. And I think the Giants hired their um, defense coordinator away from him, right, uh-huh. Graham? Yeah. So I don't, I don't know much about him either, so – yeah. Again, hope for the yeah, best. <laughs> I mean, there's no talent on Miami for him to even coach. So, right. Yeah. We exactly. shipped away Minka. So, there's. Yeah. Oh, so, that's, oh. yeah, so how, oh, do about, player, how do you feel about How do you feel about Garrett now? Obviously. 
Yeah, so like I was, I was going on my tirade about not wanting him as the head coach, and I don't think anybody wanted Jason Garrett to be the head coach. But I think, um, I think him as offense coordinator is a different story. I actually, I like it. Um, I like that he has NFL head coaching experience for Joe Judge. Mm-hmm. Um, granted, you know he wasn't a great head coach, but he won a lot of games. Yep. And people forget that when he came in as offense coordinator in Dallas, that's when Tony Romo really took off. Mm-hmm. So you have to give him credit for, for developing Tony Romo. You can't not give him credit. And Dak Prescott, who I think is, I don't think he's a great quarterback. I personally think he, like he's an average quarterback. Mm-hmm. Garrett helped develop him to looking pretty damn good. Um, I like the work he's done with the quarterbacks. Uh, his, when he was calling plays, I think for five years, they had a top seven offense. Uh-huh. Um, two of the years, they were top three. So we'll see. He hasn't called plays in a while, though. So that's, that's what makes me a little bit nervous. Um, but I'm, I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. I don't want to say I, I love it. Um, but I like it. I like it. I think they could have done worse. Um, they had some in-house candidates from our previous coaching staff that I wanted no part of. So, uh, luckily they didn't go in that direction, but we'll see. I like the experience. I like, um, his QB development, his work with QBs. I like his, the work he's done with, with tight ends. So, uh-huh. so we'll, we'll see. I'm, I'm intrigued. I like it. And I'm intrigued. I don't, yeah. I don't despise it as long as he's not the head coach. I'm okay. Yeah, exactly. You get some increased clapping on the sideline, oh. morale up. And, yeah, I go. mean, look at me. I have the easiest Halloween costume of all time now. <laughs> exactly. You can be him. <laughs> now, uh, how do you feel about – obviously, you just talked about Dak now. Do you think he, he's an idiot for declining a $30 million a year contract that he got? Because I think that's – he's just fucking stupid. I don't know why I he think, wouldn't take that. I think when, he, when I heard that he declined that, I was, I was baffled. I really was. Like, Dallas might not have a choice but to pony up, but, dude – I mean, like, you're not Patrick Mahomes. You're not Deshaun Watson. You're not, you know, Lamar Jackson. You're, that's a very fair deal, $30 yeah. million. Dollars. Like, come on, man. I thought that was the stupidest thing ever. And I was – I, in a way, I was kind of happy. I'm like, all right, because I, I don't fear Dak. Dak does not strike fear into me. So, as a Giant fan and as a fan of the NFC East or a fan of a team in the NFC East where the Cowboys play, I'm like, all right, fine. Get more money. Get $40 million a year. Make that salary cap suffer even more for a, you know, in my opinion, an average quarterback. So while I thought he was an idiot, I didn't hate it. Get more. Go ahead. Yeah, Go ahead. I'm, I'm not sure whose contract is worse, Wentz's or fucking Ezekiel Elliott. They paid oh, both of those guys way too stupid much. Stupid amount of money. I I don't know if Carson Wentz is ever gonna stay healthy in his life. I just yeah. I. I that's 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 another topic for yeah, for another day. Yeah, I, you I, see you see all these Eagles dick riders telling you all about how good he is, and he, to me, I think they should have just stuck with Foles or something. At least Foles brings energy to the team. He brings energy to the team, and you see like reports that 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 players on the team that they question Wentz's leadership um, and stuff that he's like just not well liked or whatever the case was. They love Nick Foles. They played hard for Nick Foles. That whole team, the whole city, revered Nick Foles. So exactly. I I don't know. I, you know, Nick Foles. It's not working out in Jacksonville. He's a guy – it didn't work out for him in, when he was with the Rams. That's, a, that's just a Philly guy. I think it's just one of those things where, um, you know, he was so comfortable in Philly and had to support the coaching staff and the players that, that you know, you rally behind that and kind of lifts your game up. So I, I probably would have stuck with Foles too because Wentz, I think, is, is a bit overrated and he's clearly Very injury prone. Overrated. So, you know. Go to hell, Philly. That's yeah, you, dug exactly. your, you dug your own grave. I'm not mad about it. <laughs> yeah, they threw batteries at Santa. Fuck those people. <laughs> <laughs> they are such pieces of shit. Have you ever went to a game in Philly? I feel like you'd get fucking bald or something. I, I'd, I'd probably get killed. I, I yeah. really would. I, like, that's one place I, I don't know if I could do it. I really I, I don't because I'm very outspoken. And I scream a lot. And there's no way I could not do that anywhere I watch a Giants game. So to do it in Philly, I'd probably get stabbed. Yeah. I'm a Dolphins fan. I've always wanted to go to the Bills stadium, go to a Bills game. Oh, my God, Bills Mafia. Holy shit. I, imagine that. Yeah, it'd be crazy. That, I feel like nuts. The, yeah, and the fans over there aren't too too dickish either. Like, I feel like they wouldn't yell at me from wearing my Jarvis Landry jersey. No, not, <laughs> not, 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 not at all. We, I went to the Bills-Giants game uh, week two, and, and actually we had tons of fun with them, like the parking lot tailgating and stuff. It was, it was a really great time. Um, they're, they're, they're good people. I like them. I like them yeah. a lot. So I would definitely go to Buffalo. Maybe not in December when it's like, four degrees but um yeah that makes sense oh okay no it's good okay it's probably about it froze on my end but uh no, good. obviously uh I, I went to one giants game last year and i wore my dolphins jersey like as a joke and a bunch of giants fans were getting like pissed off at me and i was just making fun of them because our record was higher 
And it was yeah. just funny that they, they don't know those things. No, I know. Um, our, I've seen a decrease in our fans. Um, like IQ. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the last three, four years have been very trying on us, very difficult. So I think everybody's just starting to lose their mind. I apologize for, you yeah. know, my brethren's giving you shit because nah, it's okay who gives a fuck you know yeah, no, like, i didn't care either i just thought it was funny because the, the dolphins that week needed to beat the vikings so that the right. giants could get into the playoffs oh, they, yeah, they didn't yeah, know yeah, that like, they didn't know I, that no of course they of course they didn't know that because they're probably just dumb drunks who 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 like the team but they don't live and die by the team because like yeah, exactly. when i see other fans in like different jerseys there i don't care i, I don't care like yeah. if if it's the giants versus the vikings and i see a bengals jersey what what do I care? The guy's yeah, going, exactly. he's probably lives in Jersey, wants to go see a game or he's visiting and wants to go see a game. Go, go have fun. You're not, exactly. you know, you're not my enemy. So wh- whatever. Yeah. Now I know, obviously we're both fellow New Jerseyans here now. I know Sopranos is a big show for you now. Do you like yeah. it? What's your other favorite show? Yeah. So, so I live, live and die by the Sopranos. They are, I got a big poster, Tony in my, in my room. Um, it's over there. But uh, <laughs> my other favorite show is 24. Um, it was like my first ever favorite show. Uh, I've seen every episode probably like 50 times and there are a lot of episodes, but I love 24 um, loved entourage entourage was, was must see television every Sunday night. Uh, we'd gather at my house and we'd watch it as, as a group of friends. And um, to this day, I, I could just throw an episode on entourage and just probably rip through like 10 episodes. It's such a great show. Um, but th- definitely those two right behind the Sopranos uh, breaking bad. I loved phenomenal show. Um, but yeah, the, the Sopranos is hard to, hard to touch. I'm actually finishing up, uh, you know, rewatching it all again for like the 15th time. So it's yeah. just, it gets better and better every time for me. I could watch it always. For me, that's the league. I've watched that shit like 20 oh, times. Oh, I love the league. Raffi's like my favorite. He makes me, every time I see Raffi on the screen, he mm-hmm. makes me piss my pants. It's, it's he's just, so fucking funny. He's so fucking funny. <laughs> He's so good. Uh, now, obviously, we both live in New Jersey, like I said. Why do you think New Jersey gets so much hate? Because it's pretty nice here. I don't, it, I, I don't understand why, why people don't love New Jersey. Maybe because um, they're jealous. Yeah, definitely. I, may, you know, maybe because when it's fucking 10 degrees out in New York or, or somewhere and you need gas and you have to get out of your car to pump it. I don't know. Exactly. Maybe you're jealous about that. Maybe you're jealous. We got, we got great pizza. We got, we got great food overall. We got, we got great people. Maybe because... You hated watching the Jersey Shore on MTV years ago. I, I don't know. It's just the armpit of New Jersey thing. I don't I don't like being called that. I take great pride in where I'm from and in the state I live in. And uh, you know, let them hate. It's hatred is a sign of jealousy, Nick. You gotta remember that. Exactly. Hatred exactly. is a sign of jealousy. Now, uh, obviously, you guys shot uh, an episode of Fade the Public at I believe it was your uh, beach house. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, how much did you drink before that episode? I just want to know. <laughs> Uh, yes, that was down in Belmar, New Jersey at my beach house. And um, we were we were pretty lit up. That is for sure. We were coming off a night and a day where we I think we drank 15 hours straight from from the morning in the pool to at night at one of the clubs. It was it was a hellacious day. And uh, they say the only way to cure a hangover is to start drinking right away in the morning. So uh-huh. what better way to film fade the public than getting rid of a hangover by drinking a few beers before you go on. <laughs> um, <laughs> that was actually, uh, we talk about it all the time. The lighting sucks. So it was like hard to see, but that was definitely one of our favorite episodes. Um, oh, okay. And I, I know you remember, if you remember it correctly, Nick had to jump in. Well, he didn't have to jump into the pool, but it was, it's like the hottest day of the summer yeah. and we're filming it outside and he had to wear sweatpants and a sweatshirt <laughs> and he was dying because he lost, he lost a bet the day before to me. Yeah. And flip um, cup, right? Yep. Flip cup. I beat his team in flip cup. And that was, that was the bet that he had to do that show in a hundred plus degree heat <laughs> in sweats and a sweatshirt. Just nauseating. That is, I felt very bad for him. And, but you know, I'm a winner. What can I do? I won. Sorry, Nick. Exactly. <laughs> Besides that episode, what do you feel is your other favorite? Because I like the Fourth uh, of July episode. That was great. That was well. that would have been the one I said. Fourth uh, of July was was a lot of fun. We we filmed that on my deck outside, and uh, you know we did our fireworks at the end and whatnot. Um, I also loved the uh, the award show we actually just recently did a few uh-huh. weeks ago. That was a lot of fun. It took a lot of time and effort to do that, especially my my singing. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> that was great. But that, that was that was a lot of fun doing that episode. Um, you know, there, there, there are a lot of interchangeable ones. Um, the one where we did our, our league, um, our league rules, like our league uh-huh. meeting we did um, before the season started in August. That was another good episode I enjoyed just because we had like 
four or five other league members on with us. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but yeah, those, those few episodes really, really stick out. And uh, you, we've done so many at this point. It's like, okay, which ones, but those, yeah. those always stick out in your head and they always have good memories from them. Yeah. You talked about your guys league meeting. Now, do you ever feel like someone's going to get waterboarded for losing? Cause I brought that up at my league meeting and I thought it'd be funny, but then people are like, Oh, that's kind of dangerous. Uh, come on. We, uh, <laughs> as you do know, the last few years, that has been one of our punishment options that people could vote on. Um, I think I really do think it's only a matter of time before <laughs> it happens. <laughs> and I can't lie. I'm, I'm a little nervous. I listen, I've never, I've never sniffed last in E-Town Get Down. Never sniffed it, um, which which I'm very proud to say. Uh, but you know that is that's that's brutal. I, I can't imagine going through that, and I, it keeps getting more and more steam every year. So uh, I'm fairly certain that one of these days it's it's gonna happen. <laughs> What do, you, what do you think your guys' like worst punishment yet has been? Because this year I stole your guys' idea. So if someone's running around in my, uh, my town as a 5K, someone's running that in some costume the winner chooses now. What, what's the worst one you guys Yeah, uh, so, f- so far um, since tracking the punishments, um, last year I think had to have been the worst. Like two years ago, two years ago our Nick came in, came in last, surprisingly, and he had to do a – do the comedy club where we all, where we all wrote the jokes and mm-hmm. we were in like a pretty serious comedy club where people were actually like cared about oh the my comedy God. <laughs> and like cared about like trying to make it big in the comedian world. And Nick gets up there telling the most ridiculously dumb jokes that we wrote for him. Um, I think that one was bad, but I also think it was like so funny that, you know, it, I don't want to put it there, but last year, last year, our friend Joe came in last and he had to be a, a bathroom attendant for like three hours a night. <laughs> so he was just sitting in a random bar that we were at and, and just, well, I, I, I unfortunately wasn't there, but from, from what I heard in the videos that I seen giving out gum and mints to these strangers and putting the sink on for people like that is just so humiliating to me. I, I don't think I could sit there for three hours on like a Saturday night and do it. Um, yeah. That, that so makes a lot to, of sense. Yeah. To me, that one, to me, that one was really the cake and, this this one that we're doing this year actually probably might be the worst, but I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it put together yet, so I, I can't say it. Um, I can't say if it's the worst or not. But uh, it's the um, I, I'm sure you know it's the the six, 12, 12 18, 18, 24 challenge. Yeah, uh, miles run, donuts eaten, beers drank, and um, yeah. <laughs> well, I think we're trying to figure out a, a different one than that because nobody really wants. To see that <laughs> yeah no you can have someone sit there and watch them do it yeah and i'm not trying to look at like cum tissues on the ground that's, yeah exactly not, no not, not my thing yeah now obviously this year uh for for me my league we did like the run around the, the lake which i live in a lake you do that the 5k um our friend who lost obviously uh shout out to him well the winner gets to choose the outfit and i didn't win so i tried i'm trying to get them to do this now my friend he got when we were like uh, in high school senior year he got hit by a bike when he was walking across the street right like a oh, like some dude dressed like lance armstrong going fucking fast as fuck <laughs> he's got like the fucking i don't even know he had like he was just going fast as fuck down this hill and he hit my friend and now i'm trying to get them to make it so that he has to dress up as a biker and run this thing but they oh, won't like, do it they're like a bunch a, of so, soft fuckers i'm telling you come, like that's a, that's such a that's such a good like like a good life circle thing you get hit by a bike and then you run a 5k dressed as a biker that's perfect exactly dressed as lance oh, armstrong it'll be funny is, as fuck that is too funny see i i if i'm in your leg i'm 100 percent making sure that happens but you know exactly that has to happen yeah it really does because i think that's just like the irony and the just the the overall satisfaction of, of the funniness and, and I'm sorry, I know getting hit by a bike probably probably hurt him a lot. I'm sorry. Yeah, it did. <laughs> yeah, but you know, thinking about it, it kind of makes me laugh. I'm sorry to your friend. Yeah, um, yeah. but he won't I think it's kind of just, a, I think it's kind of just a perfect life, life full circle thing. But, uh, I hope, I do hope that happens. Yes. As do I, <laughs> I I'm definitely going to try to push uh, something a lot harder this year. The karaoke things, so not karaoke, but, uh, the comedy that Nick had to do, that seems pretty bad. Yeah. It, it's definitely a lot. It was, it was hysterical. And when you guys write the jokes, it's, it's great. Yeah. Now, obviously you guys play in a, a two quarterback league or super flex, I'm not sure mm-hmm. which one it is, super but uh, flex, yeah. do you feel like that is going to ever become more mainstream? Cause I've never played in a super flex league. Well, now I'm in a dynasty league. That is that, yeah. but I've never once did that. Yeah, um, I was like when we first incorporated. I think it was three years. This was our third year with it. 
Um, I was a little on the fence because, like you, know, I had never never played in like two super flex. You're always playing two QB, so it's yeah. pretty much like two QB league. Um, I was on the fence, but I tell you, it's it's a different strategy in the draft. Like QBs aren't waiting to get drafted in like the eighth round or something. Uh-huh. They're going as high as the first, early second, stuff like that. So um, for it to be mainstream, I I could see it. Um, I can like a lot of people promote it on their fantasy channels and whatnot. I know we certainly do. Mm-hmm. Um, so I could definitely see it getting, getting more mainstream attention and, and stuff like that. Like I know just my brothers and his friends in their leagues, they started doing it and they mm-hmm. like it now. So it's, it's just going to have that trickle effect where um, the more people do it, the more people are going to start talking about it. Um, mm-hmm. And when people start talking about it and the, you know, the, the fun and um, you know, the change up of the dynamics of everything, I think, I think it's going to, it's going to keep getting more and more steam. That, that makes a lot of sense. My main league is a 14 team league, so we can't do that. Yeah, no, that, that's tough. That's really tough. Yeah, 14 it's, it's teams. Oof. Yeah, I've won it twice in the last like five years, but it, it's oh. like impossible. That's, that's, that's impressive because those, those leagues are, are brutal. You're playing like Rex Burkett as, as your RB1. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's why I go with the heavy running back strategy. But uh, do, yeah. you, do you change your strategy every year? Or do you kind of stick by the same thing? Because I've been a running back guy for like the last five years, heavy on the running backs. Yeah, I, it's, it's tough because. Um, I guess it's more like where, where I'm drafting type of thing. Uh, I wanted, um, I wanted a higher pick this year cause I wanted, I wanted C-Mac, Barkley, Kamara or Zeke. I wanted a top, top end running back, but um, I fell, I was, it was the ninth pick uh, and um, Devonte Adams fell to me. And we know Devonte Adams had an unreal, unreal year last year. So I'm like, I can't, I can't pass him up. Cause I normally want to get, I normally want my stud running backs. I want yeah. my running backs to be stud because I think you can find quality guys at wide receiver later on. Yeah. Um, but when you have those stud running backs, it's like, it's like you're set. Um, but Devonte fell to me and I was like, this is, I got to do it. And then on the way back, Dalvin cook had gone. And, and from there, I, I really, I, I had, I had Nick Chubb as a keeper in the 11th yeah. round. So I, I wasn't, I, I should preface by saying, um, you know, this is the only league we did keeper in. So my strategy in this league was a little bit different this year than it would be in a non keeper league in another league. Uh-huh. Uh, so I knew I could kind of go receiver heavy at the top, having an RB one and Nick Chubb already in like the 10th round, 11th yeah. round. Um, so I stacked Devante and Julio Jones together and thinking um, that's fucking money. Like that's like t- minimum 20 points a game exactly. for, for my two top end receivers. And then uh, obviously Devonte gets hurt and Julio scores just a putt, okay. like two t- you know, just it, everything kind of just fell off the lambs. I had Keenan Allen who like for the first three weeks was the number one wide receiver. So I'm, I'm thinking to myself, damn, like, you know, I'm, I'm pretty loaded with, with receivers and, and then everybody just kind of took a nosedive and so did my team. So do you, um, what do you feel like is like your worst take like ever, like on the podcast? Cause I think mine might be, I, I really like hated. I don't even know. I, I think I really hated uh, – what's his name? Fucking uh, Melvin Gordon a couple of mm-hmm. years ago. I thought he was he was shit, and that was just yeah. not true. And then uh, this year, I know I really liked drafting uh, James Conner, like, at the back. And same with Mixon. I really liked them, and they mm-hmm. just weren't shit. I mean, Mixon did good at the end, but he, yeah, he turned it on. Yeah, he did nothing. I know. So, by the time, like, your team got to where it needed to be with Mixon playing well – he probably already killed you enough to the point where it couldn't yeah. happen. Um, but I was, I was huge on, I, this is mostly like two QB leagues and stuff. I was huge on Matt Ryan this year. I thought he was going to be like, like top two, top three quarterbacks. I think I, my biggest hot take was, was, you know, we were doing a show and like, give us your most outrageous hot take. And I was like, he's going to be QB one. I, I thought loved, he was going to be great too. <laughs> I, like, dude, they were playing 13 games in the dome. Derek Carter, all he likes to do is throw the ball. Um, you know, Julio, they had Calvin Ridley, Austin Hooper. They had all these guys. They had Sanu in the beginning yeah. of the year. I'm like, there's no way he's not going to be throwing the ball like 45 times a game. Like, and I was saying to myself, the defense is going to be bad. They're going to give up a lot of points. So they're going to have to throw the ball. And it just did not work out. I drafted Matt Ryan in every one of my fucking leagues. And he was, um, he was all right for a few weeks, but nothing compared to what I thought he was going to be. I was like stupid high on Matt Ryan. And he, he fucked me in the ass numerous times yeah yeah he, no lube either you need a fucking no lube he went in there fucking after that. raw exactly ah. raw dog you dirty now uh <laughs> obviously Jameis winston now is maybe a free agent what do you think about Jameis? because i i love Jameis winston i 
he might be my favorite player to watch. <laughs> <It's> mine <laughs> too. Like, he's just fucking electric. Out there. It's electric. He's so entertaining. Like on a fantasy level, I, I love him because he's going to throw for 40 touchdowns, 5,000 yards, whatever it is. You're going to get the 30 interceptions, but, but it's worth it. It's so fun. No, right. Exactly. Like, like he was, he was playing up. I think what, what was this Saturday game against the, the Texans and like, Oh, that game was amazing. That was unbelievable. That was like the most fun I've ever watched football. First pick, the first throw, pick six. Second <laughs> pick, pick six. Like it was just absolutely insane. And yeah. he is, he's a joy to watch. I hope he's back with the bucks. Um, or wherever he goes, because he's he's a gunslinger. And I, yeah, I, I love, love that guy. watching him. I think Bruce Arians could maybe figure out how to make him not throw thirty fucking picks every year. I, I think so too. If there's any coach that can do it, he's definitely one of them that can certainly help him. But he yeah. is he is electric. Now that we're talking about Florida teams, do you think that uh, Philip Rivers, now that he's moving his fucking got his bus, he moved his twelve kids down to uh, Florida? Do you think that he's going to join one of those teams? I can, there was, uh, I think I was reading it yesterday about Bruce Arians, <laughs> excuse me, Bruce that's Arians okay. calling him a winner. Uh-huh. Um, I don't know if that's even that's an true. upgrade. Like that's not, it doesn't really make sense to me. Um, I, I don't know. You think the Dolphins, well, what about this? Do you think the Dolphins run it back with Fitzgerald, uh, Fitzpatrick and um, probably, I think Fitzpatrick and Tua would be. Tua, that's what I was going to say. Cause obviously they're going to need, probably need a placeholder for Tua for yeah. a year, at least a year, maybe half a year. Um, and, yeah, I would take Fitzpatrick over, over Rivers. I, yeah, so would I. I don't really see a fit for Rivers. Um, yeah, he, maybe, he honestly maybe, had a huge decline this year. He just didn't uh, look he good. Looks, like, and I, I was thinking I said on, on, on the podcast, he, it looks painful. Like, watching him is painful. When he throws it, it looks like he's in pain. It just doesn't – nothing, you know. And he had Keenan Allen. He had two great running backs. It's just the only place I could maybe see him – having some sort of semblance of success. And um, it probably makes sense both ways if they don't figure it out in the draft or um, via trade is maybe Indianapolis. They got a yeah. very good offensive line. Um, they got a good running back, good pass catching running back. They got T.Y. Um, I, I like Paris Campbell personally. I think he's going to be a good good wide receiver. Um, I could see that working. But the Florida yeah. teams, I, yeah, Jacksonville's I pretty, pretty tied in with Nick Foles and um, – Minshew you know, as well. I, I don't think they can cut him with that with that contract. Minshew played well. Um, I, I just I don't see it down in Florida. That's yeah, no. I, I don't know what he's doing. Maybe he's going to retire. I, I don't know. Um, wish the best for him, but you know I. Yeah, I, I don't see him being shot. very good anymore. Yeah, he's shot. He was a guy I liked in fantasy this year because last year he was pretty good. He was a guy you could draft super late and was pretty good. But this year he yep. just fucking gave good value. Yeah, oh, fat one, flat on his fucking face. It was embarrassing. Now, do you think that Eli is going to go anywhere? Or do you think he just retires? I think he just retires. I so do I. I don't think he wants to play anywhere else. And um, I again, I mean, that's another place like Indy. That's like a in, to me, Indy. I I like Brissett, but I don't think he's the answer. I think um, I yeah. think like I I would take Eli over Brissett right now. I would for a year. Yeah, so um, would I. I don't I don't know what happened to Brissett. To be honest, he looked good at the beginning of the year, and did, then he just yeah. took. A, he, they beat the Chiefs, and then he just took a stumble took a stumble that Chiefs game I thought I was like all right like because the Colts roster is good they have a yeah. very good offensive line they have good young defense um some good backs Mac Williams yeah right exactly Hines I like I like I'm a I'm a Hines fan I, I like his pass catching ability uh-huh. um but Brissett's just not the guy I can't that's like the only place I could see Eli having a chance to like be a starting quarterback and he said he doesn't want to be a backup so um I think if it's not if he doesn't want to be a backup and or, you know, if he doesn't want to back up Daniel Jones, I just think he retires. I don't think he wants to put on another uniform, and yeah, that's I why I love him. But if he does and he goes somewhere, I'm rooting for that team as hard as I am for the Giants. It's going to be sick. Yeah. Uh, but I love him. I wish him the utmost, utmost success in whatever he does. Yeah, definitely. I understand that. Now, obviously, Brady – now, what do, you, what do you think Brady does? Because I'm a Dolphins fan, and I think I could see him coming here to Miami to, you know, stick one to Bill so I can win with Flores and then uh, have Tua as the backup, and Tua could learn from Tom Brady. Do you think that's possible? I See, that's one of two things I want to see, either him in Miami uh-huh. or – and for the, for the reasons you said, like stick it to Bill, try yeah. and win with Flores. Um, maybe they can, you know, bring in some talent through the draft and free agency. Now, they, they were competitive. They have – a winner like Brady, they bring that winning mentality. Not, you know, um, who knows? They could they could be competitive again next year and, and possibly fight for a wild card. The wild card was like nine and seven in the AFC yeah. this year. Um, 
and they went to the FC Championship game, so it was crazy. Uh, but no, the the one that intrigues me the most is uh, is is the Raiders first year yeah, in Vegas. Definitely. If they get rid of Carr, um, Tom Brady in Vegas with John Gruden. Oh, are you kidding me? Yeah. I, that's that's something I would I would love to see. I don't know if you watched the uh, McGregor fight from like yesterday or two days ago. Whatever the fuck yeah, that yeah. was. What how Tom Brady was talking to the uh, oh, the Raiders to owner. Davis. Yeah, the owner. I know. And everybody's like, oh well, we'll see you next year. But like making memes and stuff yeah. about it. Uh, that that one intrigues me the most. The, the Chargers doesn't doesn't really intrigue me. Um, yeah, no, not at all for me. That, like that does nothing for me. Like the Dolphins, the Dolphins intrigue me. Team back up with Flores, sticking it to Bill, and then obviously um, the Raiders' first year in Vegas with, with Tom Brady under center would just be unbelievable. Yeah. Now I know before you talked about how your league is a keeper league. Now, do you like that? Because I'm kind of against keeper leagues. I don't. Yeah. So. Um, we actually got rid of it. Uh, I oh, okay. wasn't the biggest fan. We, we this let last year was this past year was our last year doing it. Um, I know player or leagues do keepers. Like if you take Barkley in the first round, you could keep him next year. That I, so to stupid. me, that, it ruins it ruins like the the draft is like one of my favorite days of the year. Mm-hmm. So and that that ruins it. Our I liked our rules with the keeper. Mm-hmm. Um, it was like tenth round or later, you could keep him if he's on your roster at the end of the yeah. year. So that I like in the sense where. Um, it puts extra value on those late round picks. So when Nick Chubb was a rookie and I took him in the 11th round, I strictly just, it turned out he had a pretty good rookie year towards the end too, but I was taking him on the basis of I'm probably going to keep him next year. Then I took Darius Geis, who was going to miss the whole year last year. Uh, I took him last year and thinking, okay, maybe I can keep him. So just kind of taking flyers on guys um, in case you're keeping them. In a sense, I like that, but I'm perfectly okay with no keepers whatsoever. Later rounds or in the beginning, I'm good with just having a clean, fresh draft board. Um, no head starts for anybody. Okay. Yeah, this is probably going to be my last question, maybe one more. But now, obviously, yep. you guys do the draft, and it's, like, all recorded and shit. Do you feel like that, obviously, does that make you more stressed out, or does it have, like, really no effect on you? Um, I think the first year, I was a little bit more stressed. Um, like, it was like, shit, so many people are going to be watching this, and – Nick's got this huge following and people are, people are going to fucking make fun of my picks and whatnot. Um, I, I also, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to be an asshole on camera. I don't want you know, yeah. all this stuff, say the wrong thing or something. Yeah. You don't want to um, announce that Alvin Kamara is the best pick of the draft. <laughs> right. Exa- exactly. And I get shit on it for, for the rest of the year. Um, but no, I've, I've learned that it's just, uh, it's be your natural self, whatnot. Um, I believe in, in my ability to draft and I don't think I get ripped too much. Uh, I remember actually a lot of people said I had the best draft going into it. Didn't turn out that way, but um, I, I like it. It adds it adds a little element of uh, you know of fun to it. We do the confession cam, which is yeah. which is great. It's it's a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, so I guess from the first year filming it to to now, completely completely different mindset. Yeah. Now I don't want to. Obviously, this will be the last question, but I don't want to like uh, make you feel like uh, terrible or something. But which. Uh... Which draft do you like doing better? The one with all the people that fly in or the one with uh, all your friends? Uh, I, I got to, got to stick with my guys. Okay. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I got, but I will say the one in that one we do when everybody comes in is so much fun because you see them it once a year, fun. you know, it, it is. And we go out like the, the night before and we're all just like bullshitting about the draft and whatnot. And um, they're not strangers anymore. They're friends. So it's, it's cool. And I've literally only met them twice. Uh, but in a group chat with them, obviously. So mm-hmm. it's, it's fun, like catching up when they come in and um, just seeing like the different, the, the way, the different way, the way, the different ways people like interact and, and they talk and they eat just like the, you know, how different it is from my friends in, in E-Town that I, that I love doing it with. Uh, um, so I guess it, it's like, in, in a sense, it's like two different things, but um, if I'm going to pick a league that I'm, that I enjoy more and I look forward to more. It's, it's gotta be, uh, it's gotta be my E-Town boys. Okay. That makes sense. Now, actually, I'm going to ask one more question now. How many, Please, leagues, go ahead. how many leagues do you play in? Cause I play in, I think eight or nine and it's just fucking terrible. Like when I, cause I live stream up until like 1245 on Sunday and then I have 15 minutes to set 10 lineups. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. Right. <laughs> um, I was in, I was in eight leagues this year. And <sighs> like you said, it's, it's a job ridiculously crazy. And like, I would love to get out of a few, but I, I feel I feel as though it's gonna be a little bit difficult. Like I'm in four with Nick and Max, and then mm-hmm. um, I'm in one of my brother's leagues that I like to play in because I, I want to beat those guys. They're my, you know, my brother's yeah. four years younger than me. Those kids four years younger than me. I want to beat them. Um, um, there's another league where like I was a fill-in for for somebody, and um, 
actually turns out I had a lot of fun. Then um, outside of E-Town, I have, I have one other league with, with my best friends, um, which I've won three out of the last four years and um, four out of the last six. So uh, <laughs> I'm not leaving that league anytime soon, but um, it's definitely, it's definitely tough. Uh, the old, the old saying like, why in so many leagues doesn't, isn't it conflicting? Yeah, it's conflicting, but you do try and draft the same guys. It never works yeah. out that way, but um, it's tough. It's very, very tough. Yeah. Leaving a league is impossible. Cause I'm in a league and these guys, like they try to like cheat and shit and it's just so annoying, but like I've won so many times. I, like I last five years, me and my dad have won four out of five times. So it's like, there's no it's, it's a household dynasty. You don't want to leave that. Exactly. <laughs> Goddamn stamp the fucking dynasty on there. Amen. Amen. Exactly. Now, actually, this is the, actually going to be the last question. Now, you do, you do Dynasty, obviously, right? Yes. Now, do you feel like Dynasty will ever get any bigger? Because I recently just started playing Dynasty uh, coming into this year. It'll be uh, the drafts in April. But uh, do you feel like that'll ever get any bigger? Because I'm just not sure that it can become just like uh, redraft every year. Because I know a lot of people aren't in for that commitment. No, it, and that's – you took the word out of my mouth, commitment. It's a big commitment because it's year-round. You're literally yeah. the general manager of your team. Um, this was just my first year doing it, and it, I, I, I personally love it because the more fantasy, the better, obviously. Um, but you have a, most, most fantasy players are like recreational. They love it yeah. for like the draft day, and then that's it. They don't have to worry about it till September, you know, or August when they want to start preparing, whatever the case is. Um, I do think it will get bigger, uh, but I don't think it's ever going to be like a, a staple in, in the fantasy community. You, maybe staple's not the right word. I just don't think it's ever going to be yeah. as – big and and you know um, worthwhile for a lot of the recreational fantasy players i hope it does because dynasty leagues are really really cool it's i just did one one year of it so far and i'm uh-huh. kind of looking in, to join another so um it's definitely a lot of fun and uh when you get in a league like we're in with these guys uh, yeah it's probably amazing they are, they're fucking crazy it's it's like trade after trade after trade it's it's wild you got to stay on your toes it keeps you on your toes it keeps you mentally in the game of football all year so um, it's a lot of fun. I do hope it blows up. I don't know if it will, but I definitely hope it does. Yeah, I already feel that craziness. I joined, like, they put out the draft order, and then randomly seven trades come your way, and, like, ten trades happened already, and it's like we've had the league for three days. Yeah, I know. Mm-hmm. I know. I think um, I think on draft day when we started, we had, uh, we had, like, 24 trades in an hour, just people trading picks and stuff. It was absolute madness. <laughs> Um, but that's, I guess that's the nature, the, the beauty of the beast, right? The beauty exactly. of the dynasty beast. Yeah. People just trade to trade and then you're, Oh yeah. Your that's, team. that's it's, it's hilarious. Are, are you, do you, uh, this is actually going to be the last question. Do you feel like in uh, redraft leagues, are you like someone who likes to trade heavily or no? Because I really don't trade that often. If I'm being I don't honest. really either. Um, I usually feel confident enough in the team I draft and, uh, um, the ability to like maneuver around waivers because we use fab budget and stuff. Uh, yeah. I don't love trade. If there's, if I'm desperate and I, I need to, or if I have my team's like pretty loaded and I got great depth on the bench and there's a team that's, that's below me that has a, a starter I want or somebody I think will take me over the edge and I could package like three of the guys on my bench or it's, you know, a starter and two depth guys. Maybe I'll look into that, but I normally don't make any, any crazy maneuvers in, in redrafts. Yeah. Now have you, have you become someone who likes fab? Because I just recently used it this year once uh, in a league and I won that league and I found it to be like way more fun because then if you're in last place, you don't get a fucking advantage over me. And right. I just, I just think that uh, it's, it's too hard for a lot of people to get into. I've tried to convince my friends, Oh, we should do this. We should do this. No, we're too casual for it. You're not fucking casual. You watch nine podcasts while you're sitting in class. I know what you <laughs> yeah, do. Don't give me that bullshit. Yeah, no. <laughs> I, um, I love fab. I think when we incorporated uh, a few years back, it was just an absolute game changer. I don't, I don't play in a league. I don't play in a league now without fab. It's uh-huh. um, it's been the staple of the last few years. And I think it, it adds a different strategy. It adds different, um, you know, different tactics and stuff like that. Cause you know, you don't want to, you know, if you blow your fab in week five, that could be fine. If you got the right guys that sustain yeah. you for the rest of the year. But if you're, you know, week 12 and your starting running back goes down and you don't have the backup for some reason and you want to get them, but you're out, you know, that's an advantage to somebody in the league. So it's like, you really got to think these things through. You got to have a strategy. Uh, it just adds a different element of, of, of thought process into the fantasy league uh, yeah. each year. So I'm, I love that. Don't want to play in a fantasy league without it. 
Yeah, I can see how people don't like it, though. Like, I saw someone in that league fucking blow $100 on Paul Perkins. How did that feel? Oh, I felt oh, fucking yeah. stupid that's, as fuck. That's bad. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's really bad. That's just that's a season ruiner right there. Exactly. You can't make the playoffs after that. No, you're done. All right. Uh, thank you for coming out, Nick. It really does mean a lot. I'm going to end the video here. Uh, thank you guys all for watching. Nick, obviously, you can uh, shout out anything you want them to follow. I'll put it in the description. Yeah, they just, uh, you know, if they want to follow me on Twitter, that's that would be great. Um, I kind of, you know, tweet out my, my, my thoughts, whatever comes into my head. But, um, no, Nick, thank you so much for having me, man. This was a lot of fun. I, I, we said it last night uh, that it would be great, and I personally think it was. So yeah, thank was you so good. much for having me on and, and everybody that, that watches. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you guys very much. Uh, make sure to check out Nick. I'll see you guys uh, in another video. Goodbye, my friends.